Hi, everybody. Welcome. Um, thank you for joining us today for our um, five-year roadmap town hall meeting. My name is Anna Hunsinger, and I am the Vice President of Community Engagement here at Internet2. And joining me today are many people, but uh, also uh, just calling attention to Mr. Ron Kramer, who has been uh, working with us as a consultant and uh, probably you got to talk to him as well. He's the one that has been helping us with this important uh, effort. And uh, he's gonna be the one that you're gonna hear from shortly. I'm also joined today by the Internet2 executive leadership team, including Howard Pfeffer, our CEO and president. This is the second of two town halls that we are hosting uh, with the community. And the purpose um, is to provide all of you with a summary uh, of where we are and the input that and feedback that we have received to date, and to tell you a little bit more about the next steps in our five-year roadmap process. So with that, let's get started. And I am going to introduce Mr. Ron Kramer. Ron. All right, thank you. Thank you very much, Anna. And uh, it's, it's really nice to be with you all today. I'm gonna share my screen and um, take you through a, a little slide deck to kind of refresh where we've been with the roadmap and, and where we're going. Uh, I wanted to start off by saying that it, it's really important to understand that at this phase of the roadmap, we're really documenting what we heard from the community. So this does not represent the plan that uh, that will be drafted in the end. What it is is the first part of the project where we just come back to you and say, this is what we heard from you. Uh, and this is a little lesson learned from yesterday's session where, where I believe some of the folks thought we were presenting the roadmap that Internet2 is moving forward on. But so we still wanna gather uh, lots and lots of input from you as, as this proceeds. So the roadmap itself is, is really this three-prong thing. It's to build a collective understanding amongst all the stakeholders uh, that, that are involved in Internet2 work, and then to what I call inspire a deep appreciation, meaning that we have a very diverse community with, with different needs and, and different wants and hopes, um, and just for all of us in the community together to appreciate what we need as a community. And then in the end, when the roadmap is published, we need a commitment from not only Internet2, but everyone in the community, because as a community owned and governed and operated uh, organization, uh, we're all in this together and whatever we do, we're going to do together. So this a strong commitment of what the community's role is, what Internet2's role in is, is, is gonna be really important for everyone. So we're doing the roadmap in three phases. Um, the first phase is listen. Uh, these two town halls really uh, are an important anchor point in that part, although the listenings will continue through the next phases. In phase two, which, which could go beyond uh, community exchange in May, but phase two is really about, okay, here's what we heard from the community. Here's what they're asking us to do. Here's in some ways uh, new things or, or things that you're asking for improvement on. Let's loop back with you and validate that. So you'll see different groups getting together to, uh, to discuss what is in the listening session narrative and to, uh, to really say, we confirm that Internet2, this is what you're saying you heard is what you heard from us. And then the third phase uh, is, is really let's formulate now how we're gonna do some of these things, who we're gonna partner with. If Internet2 isn't gonna do something and it's important to the community, how do we reach beyond the inter Internet2 to get some of these things done? So this three phase approach eventually gets us to a place where we hope we continually listen better and better. And then we come back with you and validate, come up with a plan and move forward. So just a little background in the, the phase one process started back in late October. Um, since that time, we've had 51 listening sessions. I think the number is 491 documented participants in those sessions. 
Um, we've taken hundreds of pages of notes between myself and, and some of the folks from Internet2 that helped arrange the sessions. And then my role was really then to put all that content together and anonymize it and then develop a detailed narrative. And I think Glenn's going to put in the chat session um, a, a link to the Google Drive in which you'll see uh, these presentation materials. Uh, you'll see the detailed narrative, which, which dives very deeply into every concept that we've explored. Um, be sure if you look at the detailed narrative, at the end of each section, there's a, a appendix linked, and that appendix will take you through um, all the detail you'll ever want to know about any of those points that were that emerged during the listening sessions. And then we also posted an executive summary. So if you just want to read about this at, at a high level, um, the executive summary would be a really great place to, um, to focus your attention. So reaching out to the community, we tried to be ex as expansive as we could. And so I won't read all of these, but these are all the different types of groups that uh, participated uh, in the sessions. And I, I can't thank you enough for investing your time and your thoughtfulness into these because I, of all the things I've done in my 25 years in, in higher ed, um, I was amazed at the thoughtfulness and the investment of time and energy that, that you all put into this. So what did you all tell us? Um, and, and most of the presentation now will just be going through some details about, about what, what you all said you, you'd like to, the future to be like. So uh, you acknowledge that Internet2 already delivers core things for you, whether they're capability solutions or solutions, uh, solutions or services that are essential to the community. And, and they said, keep doing that. Um, We've over the years together, we've we've developed incredible things that are solutions at scale, whether it's things like in common or the next generation infrastructure, things we've done with uh, Net Plus and Trust and Identity. Uh, so those are all things we did together uh, as a community. And again, you said, keep doing those big important things to us. And then convening has been an incredibly important aspect of all of this. And we heard over and over again, continue to present opportunities to bring us together, whether it's on Zoom or in person, in smaller meetings and training sessions, uh, but, but keep bringing us together uh, in, the, in the areas that Internet2 specializes in. When we, when we look at the future, um, really, I think one of the, these, these were the main five comments that, that um, prevailed over and over again. Uh, one is do things that benefit the entire community. So uh, for some smaller institutions or entities, um, they may benefit in one way. And for large research universities or research organizations, they benefit, they may benefit in another way, but, but do things that, that benefit the community. Um, things like Net Plus and Edgerome were brought up over and over again as, as those kinds of things. Uh, Look for specific challenges and opportunities. So when, and I think this, this really means, um, although at some point we're at conceptual high level areas as we start to dig through things and try to figure out uh, what we may do, um, in the end, deliver specific capabilities that, that help. Um, extraordinary value came up over and over again is, if there's small things we can do on our own, just let us do that on our own. But if there are big things that have extraordinary value for all of us and leverage core competencies of the community, do those. And then the last one was, whatever we do, do a risk analysis around it, make sure that we can uh, identify what the value is and, and measure the value is um, for, for everything that we do. Uh, Internet2 is uniquely qualified to do many things, right? The things around the network, the things around trust and identity, uh, the things around support for research. Uh, focus on those kinds of things that, that the community needs that, that we're really qualified to do. So I, I think part of this message was don't spread yourself too thin and venture out into too many areas. Focus on what you're really good at. And then th this one is right from the beginning when we all first tried to get bandwidth when Internet 2 first started is 
help us do things we can't do on our own or if there'll be a better outcome if we do it together. And when I think about back in the late 90s when all of us were struggling um, just to get T1s, T3s and, and, uh, and larger circuits, um, we fought fights that on our own, we, we couldn't make much progress. But as a community with our regionals and with internet too, uh, we, we really turned the world around for us in terms of those capabilities. And number three here is people seem to have a hard time, um, myself included at times, discovering really what internet two can provide for, for us. And so make it easier to discover and acquire services that internet two puts out there. So everything from a matrix of services to uh, a little better capability to dive deeper into what's in the website, but, but look closely at how do I access all the wonderful things that this community presents? And then the last one, which I, I mentioned on the previous slide is whatever we do, make sure that progress and effect and impact can be measured and shared. So we all know that internet two consists of many different entities. And we talk a lot about membership, but I think going forward, what the community is saying, focus on who's being served rather than who is a member. Uh, I, I think many of you might know that, uh, you know, we have hundreds of people of organizations that pay membership fees, but we, we literally serve millions of people outside that area in um, the community uh, access program, uh, in Edgerome users, in NetPlus users, and, and so focus on who's being served. And then Internet2 is not a vendor, it's a, it is a partner. And so whatever we do, work in ways that keep us solid as a partner. And, and that when people look at us as Internet2, they, they think about a key partner of theirs in the work that they do. More and more, we, we all want to focus on inclusive conversations. Uh, everyone has stuff to add to the mix. And from the smallest organizations to the largest organizations, we have really smart people with, with really high levels of capability. And so, so strive more to include everyone uh, and it'll help us all thrive better. And then some of the things are a little bit more complicated than uh, a lot of us can uh, do on our own. And so as we deploy solutions and services, Make sure the community is supported well in managing and supporting those things. Uh, setting up, initially setting up things like Edgerome might not be as trivial to some organizations as it is to, to others that, um, you know, that have dozens of network engineers and trust and identity staff. And so how do we make sure that when we make things available, we're making them universally available? So, Couple of the things that came out in the discussion um, we formulated as grand challenges. And, and so a few of these are things that Internet 2 is already working on and, and have worked, have worked on. And I'll talk about those in the in the sections that are related directly to them in a few minutes. But these are the three that I would say are already in the portfolio. So continue to build more intelligence into the network, help shape the next trust and identity ecosystem, and help the community take advantage of evolving cloud and research and education capabilities. So I'm gonna to touch on these in a little more detail in a minute. There's these four other things that aren't really part of the portfolio now. Um, we don't know that they're going to be part of the portfolio. What we do notice, notice is that the community wants to talk more about these to formulate what might happen if we ventured into these things as a, as a community uh, with internet too as a partner. So, so the first one is really about contracted uh, knock and sock and firewall services. So for organizations that don't have the ability to do these things on their own, is there a way for us to do more of this as a community? Um, these things on this page are gonna take a lot of exploration and a lot of conversations. They're not things that are gonna be done in a month or two. They're things that are probably years worth of work. They're things that we've tried already as a community and then sometimes succeeded and sometimes failed. But, um, but they're things that are obvious needs that have emerged. So the, the knock sock firewall, um, sh shared regional storage solutions. Uh, there's several of these 
in play already in our community at the regional level, um, not really so much at the national level except for commercial providers. And then uh, the third one is really in support of research uh, at all levels, but now data is the fuel that supports research, uh, that supports artificial intelligence, machine learning. So how do we build services and solutions around managing, curating and access data in ways that drive innovative research, um, lead to better solutions? Uh, th this, is, this is another one of those, this is a really big deal take a lot of conversation uh, to, get to, to get to a better place here. And then we all know that security, compliance, risk, and privacy are, are preeminent in our community. And so how do we have conversations and, and make progress down the road uh, of thinking more about these areas and, and delivering solutions in these areas? Again, those four things, not sure Internet 2 is gonna do those, in the listening sessions, they came up over and over again. So I wanted to report on them to you today. So another part of the listening went um, not so much towards grand challenges, but things that uh, I categorized as enriching the community. And so, so these six things are the, the primary categories uh, at, at this level. So Internet 2 as an advocacy mechanism, uh, people talked a lot about um, ubiquitous broadband in this arena, uh, about uh, helping with federal, uh, federal programs, federal grant programs, um, federal relations. Uh, they really said in the areas of advocacy, stick at the federal level, not so much the state and local level, but, but help us look into um, how we build those relationships and, and how we further uh, the impact of programs that we're interested in. Uh, the second one, inclusion and broadening participation. This one's really about more extending the community to more and more people that could benefit from the Internet 2 programs. And so listen well, reach out, uh, try to determine what is the, what are the entrance needs of every community member and what will it take to uh, keep them engaged in the community and keep them benefiting from what the community has to offer. Uh, and, and I think Internet 2 has done some remarkable things over the last couple of years in this area. And, and I know there's an appetite to continue that work. The third one I mentioned uh, early on uh, in, in the process, but just this idea of, of keep bringing us together. Uh, this has, has many implications for the kinds of things that Internet 2 does and what it delivers. But it's really, um, we're better together, we're stronger together, we work on solutions together that are more meaningful to all of us. And, and the community said, this is one of the, the preeminent things that Internet 2 needs to continue doing. I think all of us know that we can always improve communications whether it's websites or stories or, um, or forms or how we access information, how we distribute information, the community said, keep working on communications and, and keep bringing those kinds of things forward. Onboarding and relationship management, um, the onboarding process for Internet2 can be a little bit different depending on, on what vector you're coming into the program at. But the, the message from the community that we heard here was consider everyone's uh, entrance need. And then once they're a member, how do you keep nurturing that relationship to make sure community members are finding what they need, have access to what they need, and are benefiting from what the community is being offered uh, th through the programs? So it's not only onboarding, which, you know, we, we want to work on improving that process as there's more and more turnover in, in the organizations in our community, but then how do you sustain those relationships um, through the process? And the final one in this area was um, learning from one another. Um, we, we spend a tremendous amount of time with each other and asking each other how we do things, how we solve problems, how we take advantage of opportunities. And, and so continuing this, um, in my humble opinion, this is one of the great values of this community. If, if I want to learn more about moving to the cloud or how to take advantage of, of connecting different resources, how to get access to data, 
what trust and identity is going to look like in the future, um, how to provide access to the network in myriad ways. The way I've done that my entire career, and I think most of you have too, is you ask someone you trust and you can learn from, and, and you move forward um, with, with that. Um, Internet 2 is a wonderful place for us to tell those stories together and learn from one another and, and leverage one another. So within, you'll recognize these as more programmatic things within Internet 2. And, and I wanted to just touch on these a little bit because there's some sp specific things in these areas. Uh, so with network services, over the last few years, um, we've done a wonderful job in our community of, of advising Internet 2 and supporting Internet 2 and putting in place the next generation infrastructure. Now that's in, that in, is in place, how do we leverage that? How do we build more intelligence into the network so we can, we can track data wherever it is from where it originates to where it's used? How do we identify um, where there might be stall points in the network or, or where the network uh, needs more capability? Uh, how do we build artificial intelligence and machine learning into the network so we're more proactive about identifying opportunities and challenges in the network? Uh, Internet 2 is positioned really well to do this now with the next generation infrastructure in place, uh, but there's a lot more to, to do, obviously, in, in this area as we move forward. And then in trust and identity services, uh, a few years back, when we used trust and identity services, some of us would just use commercial providers or just use Internet 2 tools and solutions. Now, everywhere we go, it's a mix of these commercial solutions and community and um, community design tools. And, and so this next, next generation of trust and identity in that ecosystem, uh, it's going to take all of us getting together and talking about how do we move forward? How do we embrace this uh, marriage of commercial solutions uh, and community uh, community uh, developed uh, solutions. Also in, in trust and identity, you know, the next generation of where in common is going to go, where edge roam is going to go, uh, where uh, a lot of these services around security and identity and um, and all the different things we hear about every day and read about in the internet of, of how we authorize and authenticate uh, will be important. Net plus services, which um, when I was at Notre Dame, we were we were involved in the first Net Plus solution, and more and more of those solutions are benefiting all of us. Uh, and people are asking, so how do more people get involved in Net Plus? How do we work with industry and in bringing more solutions that we all want into the Net Plus portfolio? And then how do we learn about and access and 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 drive to uh, to solutions? in that plus that benefit all of us um, in, in new and wonderful ways. We met a lot with the regional networks. Uh, the regional networks uh, were heavily engaged in this process because they're one of the most important partners uh, Internet 2 has, both as members and as partners, because data doesn't get from one place to another and services don't get from one place to another without a combination of international, national, regional, and local services. And so in, in working with the regional networks in the listening sessions, um, we heard a lot about help us deploy solutions to those we serve directly. Uh, be great partners with us in advocacy and federal relations. Uh, help us with ubiquitous broadband so we can get, we can get where everyone needs us to get uh, in order to uh, have a positive impact on, on society and research. Uh, and so the, the value of the regional networks and how they work with the CAP program uh, extends Internet to in so many uh, ways that are profoundly impactful uh, for the K through 12 community, the healthcare community uh, and, and local governments and libraries and uh, just myriad ways that, that that's impacted. And then in the area of research, um, you know, this is where Internet 2 started. Um, research is involved in so many in, incredible ways, uh, not only moving more into research that, that needs security parameters around it, but how we leverage the cloud, uh, how we help research entities get people ready to support them and find careers in supporting research. Uh, the RCD community uh, was very vocal in talking with us about 
all the tools that they need were found within the research community at some point. And now as we move to more commercial solutions, um, more solutions that are leveraged by entire campuses or entire organizations, there needs to be this new understanding of how research work works in this cloud world, along with CIOs and enterprise IT specialists and trust and identity specialists and network specialists that live in other parts of the organization, not necessarily housed directly in research. Uh, so a lot of areas there for growth and, and impact. And then the final area is really in advancing workforce development. Um, in many ways, uh, the pandemic uh, unleashed some incredible things in terms of capability from working anywhere we are and, and these massive uh, online sessions we're now capable of doing. But we've also, this fluidity in the workforce has caused us to really sit back and think about how do I find people? How do I keep people? How do I prepare people uh, for the next generation of work we need them to take on? How do they see a path forward in their own organizations? And, and how do they feel, um, how do they feel comforted by knowing their organizations are helping them prepare from a professional development in a, in a career, career wise way. And I'm almost done. So I'm almost through this. And I, so think about questions you may have and, and where you want to take this conversation today. But so the next steps um, were, we're asking that you do spend some time on the detailed narrative. When you jump into that, if there's just certain areas that um, that intrigue you, I think the document is designed in a way that if you just want to read about advocacy, you can find the section on advocacy and find the appendix on advocacy, and you can focus on that. So, so you don't have to consume um, the dozens and dozens of pages. You can really reflect on um, what's important to you there. And if it's all important to you, boy, have at it, and um, you, you'll find many interesting things there. And then take the opportunity to verify that what we presented in this format and in the documents, we didn't miss anything. So are there things that, that we misinterpreted that are missing that you thought would be there and aren't, or things that are underrepresented in those reports? That would be very helpful to us uh, as we venture forward on the roadmap. So don't be afraid to provide input to uh, to the team and and they're they're ready to they're ready to hear more. And then my final point here is really to think about the role of the community. Um, one of the things I've reflected on in the last couple of years is engagement and collaboration and facilitation are all undergoing somewhat of a change in this world of more online and less in person. And maybe we'll get back to more in person, but I keep reflecting on that right from the beginning in the 90s of Internet 2. Everything Internet 2 was driven by the community saying, these are the needs we have. This is how we want to help. This is how we want to invest in ourselves as a community. And, and so I think in the coming months, you know, more conversations about what is the role of the community in driving all this forward becomes a, a really essential conversation. So. Final thoughts, thank you for investing your time in this. Continue to provide input. And we, we expect, we're gonna keep working on this in the, in the coming months, but we expect to really have a nice conversation at the Community Exchange in Atlanta in May and, and hope you can join your, uh, your colleagues there. So I'm gonna stop sharing. Um, I think Howard might want to say a few words uh, and, and we're going to get to some questions. Thanks, Ron. Uh, first, thanks, Ron, for <laughs> helping us uh, with this, uh, this uh, project uh, for the last uh, couple of months, although it seems, seems longer. But uh, thanks again. It's, uh, it's certainly a significant undertaking. Um, and also thank all of you who um, have given us your time and your energy. Uh, certainly, if I, if I think about where Internet 2 is in its history, it is inspiring, I think, to me and everybody at Internet 2 to see such a, a vibrant level of engagement from our community in helping us plot out uh, our, 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 our next step in our journey in supporting uh, all of you. Uh, a few thoughts for me when I, when I, now that I've sort of seen you know, uh, all the input that we've gotten to date. 
you know, I think it's it certainly the scope of it uh, certainly reflects uh, what's the, the nature of internet too, um, uh, as an organization. Uh, it's a very, as Ron said, diverse uh, set of stakeholders. Um, we are not only a convener of the community, uh, we're also a provider of services and an, op an operator of, of some core infrastructure. Um, we're a partner with, with many of you in the community um, and in the, the ecosystem that serves research education. Uh, and uh, so, you know, many of these things uh, that have been brought up to date um, certainly fit within that, that context. I, I think another takeaway for me has been the way we look at this is, is this is a, a process, not an event. Uh, and that that's likely to, that will continue into the future, even as we get to community exchange and beyond, that some of these items, as, as Ron mentioned, some of these things are, are natural uh, uh, evolutions of work that we either already have planned or currently underway. Some are things that we will have to figure out how we add uh, uh, to existing programs and, and the capabilities of internet too, and deal with you know how, how things get prioritized, how they're resourced, how they how they 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 they, they uh, get fit in and, and, and measured. And there are some, uh, like some of the grand challenges that are uh, as as uh, we used to say, bigger than a red box, and are at very early uh, conceptual phases. And those uh, will take uh, continued uh, discussion with the community. Um, and our partners to uh, figure out if they are, uh, what's the best path forward for the community to take on those. And so, you know, I, again, I, I look at this as, as a, a continuous sort of process with uh, different, different points in time. Uh, things will, will have different starting times and, 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 and uh, 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 there'll be different parts of the life cycle as we, as we explore these things. And I think last I think Ron mentioned this, uh, but I, and once you spend some time, I don't expect that everybody would do it all today. But once you if you haven't done so, spend some time going through uh, all the material, um, and you see the full uh, picture, the you know, of, of of all the the input. Uh, it might trigger uh, uh, some thoughts about uh, some things that are missing, and we certainly want to be uh, uh, comprehensive, as comprehensive as we, as we can. Um, going forward, so if there are things, don't be shy about about uh, bringing them up. Um, I've 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 seen a few things that I'm gonna uh, gonna add. Um, so with that, again, um, thank you all. I we'll really look forward to the next steps in this process, and uh, hopefully we'll get to see uh, many of you face to face uh, at the Community Exchange in Atlanta. With that, I'll turn it back over to Anna. Thank you, Howard. And thank you, Ron. So uh, we're going to now turn it to you and see if you have any comments, questions. Uh, again, feel free to use the chat feature. Um, I recognize that uh, a lot of what you just saw, um, you know, you may need some time to also reflect on that and to take a look at that. Please, um, if you didn't see this, uh, Glenn posted in the chat window where you can see everything also. So if today is just not the date that you've had an opportunity to read these things, uh, please know that we are more than happy to make time to listen back to your feedback or whatever you may wanna provide either directly through one of us, uh, through internet to staff or directly with Ron. Um, so um, anyway, uh, Ron, you're getting some kudos uh, for the engagement with the community and summarizing the findings. I agree. It was a lot of great feedback and input. Yeah, one of the things as people are thinking, it's really hard in a meeting with so many people for everyone to um, to to jump in. So if, if you have something to jump in with, please do. I, I think. The most amazing thing to me in this was how many people engaged. Um, when I started this, I thought we're going to end up with 20 sessions and a couple hundred people providing input. And people kept on wanting to talk and kept on 
um, bringing value to the conversation. And uh, this community should be really proud of the fact that um, you stepped up and, and let your thoughts be known. Anna, I was wondering, so, so we have a couple months now be, before community exchange. Um, do, do you or one of the other ELT members want to talk about like what you think might happen between now and then in terms of as we start to sort through everything we've learned from the community? Uh, there we go. If I unmute myself, uh, certainly, I mean, I'm happy to comment kind of what I'm thinking, but uh, happy to also volunteer my colleagues from the executive team if they'd like to go first. Um, I'll just say, um, you know, uh, to start with, I mean, we've been reviewing uh, everything, not just, uh, you know, with my with my own team and kind of making, uh, you know, already making it a priority to look and see what are the things that, uh, you know, we see most immediate. And um, it's, it's really great to see some things that we've been working on that I think the community is saying, you know, keep on working on them, but improve upon them or make them easier. So, we're doing so. Um, I also have engaged uh, one of uh, a really important advisory group, the Community Engagement Program Advisory Group. In fact, I see some of them actually uh, here participating today. And just yesterday, we had a meeting where they also had an opportunity to start providing some feedback also. And I think I have, uh, as I told them, um, a lot of really great working sessions coming up with that advisory group to also provide input and advice as we start uh, defining, you know, what may be uh, areas that we can start executing on or addressing and the longer term planning as well. So I would say, I think the involvement of the program advisory groups and other, uh, you know, community uh, input groups uh, just because, uh, you know, we all have program advisory groups, there's also many other uh, groups are providing a lot of input and actually doing a lot of the work of also guiding what we do at Internet too. So I would expect that we're going to have to be talking very frequently with those uh, on the lead up to community exchange and, of course, after community exchange. Um, last thing I'll say is that I think... Uh, uh, maybe Howard mentioned this, uh, we got to also uh, present things to our board. There are committees of the boards like the Program and Priorities Committee also that will be meeting as well. So um, certainly uh, I think uh, we need to also involve uh, that uh, important constituent group as well. So that's um, if anybody else would care to add from the exec team, that'd be great. Well, Anna, I would, I would just echo you know, what you said, um, we had a retreat with the network services leadership team, and we were taking some of the input from um, the preliminary uh, readouts of the five-year roadmap into our consideration for our 2023 plans. Um, and we also will have Ron joining the uh, NAOP PAG in a few weeks uh, at our March meeting. So uh, just as you were saying, being able to get the program advisory groups uh, engaged. So I think um, we're already seeing ways that we can uh, adopt some of these uh, things that we're hearing or modify our short-term programs to start taking advantage of some of the things we're hearing. Yeah, I guess one other comment I would make to the community is, uh, I was also really energized by how involved the Internet 2 staff wanted to be in this, in setting up meetings with you and reaching out to the community. Uh, the energy level from dozens and dozens of people within the Internet 2 staff uh, really made this all possible by uh, by setting up the sessions and and making sure they reached out to you to to let you know that that there was an opportunity to hear your voices. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Corbido, for your plus one. Okay. Well, um, I think that um, as uh, as I try to just very slowly say that maybe we're going to be giving everybody time back. Maybe there are some other questions. Again, uh, it, it's, there's a lot of things to to look at uh, now. So uh, very.
much vested in your feedback, reactions. Uh, if you get an opportunity to read this, please let us know also what may be missing. I know Ron emphasized that. Hard to believe, but there could still be things that maybe would be important to incorporate into this. So please reach out to any one of us at Internet2 or Ron himself um, on this as well. Um, okay. Uh, going once. Going twice. I see lots of smile. Maybe it's time to wrap it up. <laughs> Okay, well, I think uh, we're gonna give everybody some time back. Thank you again for joining today. Uh, we really appreciate it. And I hope you're all planning to be in Atlanta in a few weeks. Uh, it's promising to be a great time of the year to bring the community together. So hope to see many of you uh, in 3D uh, very soon. And in the meantime, please take care. And again, thank you for joining us today.